Yo, what is up, guys? I'm Random Mr. Four One, and today I'm gonna be doing my second ever Blu-ray update video. Now, my first one is actually a Blu-ray collection video in which I talked about all the Blu-rays that I had owned at the time. That was recorded on Black Friday of 2014, and from 2014 Black Friday to February of 2016, I've picked up a lot of Blu-rays, and that's the video that I'm here to make today. Now, it's not gonna be like every uh, year like this video is, but I'll try to do these more often because I just want to update you guys what I'm buying, and uh, yeah, this is going to be as my previous one, uncut, and also, for people that are wondering where movie reviews are, there's a lot of stuff going on that I can't really edit a lot of stuff, that's why this video is just pure raw, I just want to get something out to you guys, but if you want to see the movies that I, if you want to see my thoughts on movies go to my letterbox account link will be in the description i log every single movie that i see so yeah saw promo but whatever let's start off with the first title that i picked up and that is 12 years a slave now this one best picture at the 2013 oscars and this is an excellent excellent film i mean solomon northup his story is just brutal to watch i remember and also like, True Tell IG4 portraying him, he did a fantastic job. Lupita Nyong'o does a great job in this as well. And the scene that I will never forget is when Lupita Nyong or when True Tell IG4's character has to whip Lupita Nyong'o. It's one of the most heart wrenching scenes I've seen in the movie. Just overall, a very sad and well made film. Great job, Steve McQueen. Alright, the next one we have is 22 Jump Street. Now, I do have 21 Jump Street. However, that is on DVD. That's before I started collecting, or er, Blu-rays. Yeah, collecting Blu-rays. And this, honestly, I don't know if it's funnier than the first, but this is still a damn funny movie. It's so self-aware. It's hilarious. I've seen it like t three times now, when every time I laugh my ass off. So yeah, very funny movie. Very self-aware, meta. Um, like it's hilarious. Also, one of my favorite things about this is when they're talking about, like, the sequel, like, 23, Jump Street, 24, 20, like, all the way up to, like, 42 or something. That was pretty funny at the end, so, yeah, it's 22, Jump Street. Next one I have is the 2014 Best Picture winner, which is Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of, Ner if, of Ignorance. Now, I recently rewatched re it, and while I think it is a fantastic film, I don't think it deserves to win Best Picture at all in the slightest, actually. There are problems with the movie... I mean, you can hate me all you want, but I did find there to be some problems. Like, it, this is a very, very slow movie. Very slow. And, um, yeah, but it's still a phenomenal movie, don't get me wrong. But I just don't think it deserved to win Best Picture. Whatever, that's my little chat on Birdman. Alright, the next movie that I got is a movie that a lot of people are like, hey, probably not going to rewatch it in the future, but you know what? I've seen it like three times, and it's freaking great boyhood Richard Linklater is probably my favorite director I'm excited for everybody wants some um, uh, I like basically all his other movies the before trilogy is phenomenal and this is no exception boyhood is an incredible feat not only an incredible film from Richard Linklater but also an incredible feat of filmmaking in general to create the idea of filming a, the same kid for 12 years and creating a story out of that it is absolutely mesmerizing, and I definitely do think that Richard Linklater deserved to win Best Director at the Oscars last year. He was extremely snubbed for that. At the time, I thought Alejandro deserved it, but now thinking about it, no, this this really deserved it. Richard Linklater, phenomenal director, love this film to death. If you guys haven't seen Boyhood, it is pretty long, but it's a great movie. Alright, the next one, uh, I picked this up today. My dad... Actually, I went Blu-ray shopping with me, and he told me to get this movie. He told me to get, like, other movies on this list, but this is a double feature, and that is Disclosure and Fatal Attraction. Haven't seen either of these. Can't really say much about it. I know this is, like, similar to The Gift. Like, this is kind of what The Gift is, um, I guess, not really homaging, but I don't, I don't really know how to describe it, but I heard this is, like, The Gift is very similar to this. So I'm excited to check this one out. Disclosure, I really don't know anything about. But um, I'll probably watch it in the future sometime. And um, yeah. Alright, the next one is one of my favorites. Forrest Gump. This is a slow movie, don't get me wrong. But th this movie has 
some some of the most quotable lines in films, some of the best scenes in movies with, with him competing in the ping pong tournament, with him talking to Bubba about shrimp. This movie's hilarious. Like, dude, how did he not enjoy Forrest Gump? Unless you're Jay Baruchel. If you guys get that reference, you're amazing. I love you. Uh, but Forrest Gump, dude, Tom Hanks, this is probably the best performance I've seen in my entire life of any actor. Like, he he transcends into this role. He does a phenomenal job here. And you don't even see Tom Hanks. You see Forrest Gump. It's done masterfully. Sally Field does a great job in this movie as well. I don't know who the girl Jenny was played by, but uh, Robin Wright. How can I forget that? But Robin Wright does a fantastic job in this as well. So I'm um, pretty sure you've seen Forrest Gump, so I'm not going to tell you to check it out because mostly everyone has. Next one, Gone Baby Gone. Haven't seen it. Don't know what to talk about. Seemed interesting, though. And uh, it's from... Who is this from? Who directed this? Directed by Ben Affleck. So uh, he also directed Argo, and that was great. So I hope this is just as good. All right, the next one is Gone Girl. Freaking awesome movie, fantastic. Absolutely love it. This isn't like a steel book or anything, but um, I don't even have any steel books to be honest. But uh, the one cool thing that comes with this is an amazing Amy book, and I didn't really know it at the time that that came with it, but now that I'm looking at it, it's pretty damn cool. And I have read the book. I read it when we were watching me, when my cousins and I were watching the movie. And it's just really interesting to see how they made this book just for the film's purpose. So, Gone Girl, fantastic movie. Alright, next we have Goodfellas, which I haven't seen yet, but Martin Scorsese directed it. I really enjoy Martin Scorsese's previous work, like Wolf of Wall Street. Actually, that's the only... Re or, uh, Shutter Island as well. I really enjoy his work. And I'm just waiting to see this one. I just picked it up today. And, um, yeah, it's supposed to be one of the best movies of all time. So, we'll definitely check it out in the future. All right, next we have another double feature. And that is for Grease and Saturday Night Fever. Now, I haven't seen either of these. I know people are going to be shocked that I haven't seen Grease. But I just haven't gotten the time to. Um, I know these are both supposed to be really good, like, 70s, 80s movies. I, I believe Grease came out in 1978. And uh, Saturday Night Fever came out in 1977. Um, no, both of them came out in 1977. Um, yeah, they're, they're supposed to be pretty good 70s movies, I've heard, so, yeah. Next up, we have Horrible Bosses 2. Very underrated sequel. It's not as funny as the first, but it's still a pretty damn funny movie. Chris Vault is very underutilized here. There are a lot of jokes that are just very immature and don't work, but... I, I've seen it twice, and both times I've laughed my ass off. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm alone in that, but I found Horrible Boss to be pretty damn funny. So, Horrible Boss 2. Also the first one, but we're talking about 2. Alright, yeah. Next up is one of my favorites from last year, and that is Inside Out. Haven't rewatched this yet. I've tried to, but I haven't yet. And I really want to. But, um... Beautiful, beautiful animation. One of Pixar's best films. Just a very good idea. I know Osmosis Jones did that, and um, that other show, I forgot what it was called, like something with, like Inside Marty's Mind or Brian's Mind, something like that. But I, I think the concept is nevertheless very intriguing. They executed it very well in this movie. A lot of also emotional scenes, so overall, Inside Out, fantastic Pixar movie, as well as a fantastic kids and adults movie. Alright, the next one is a movie that I find to be really, oh my god, overrated, but I still bought it because it was like $4, and I was like, it's not awful, so, yeah, and that is Interstellar, yeah, you can hate me all you want, but uh, this movie's pretty damn overrated, uh, it's long, it's confusing, and for the first hour, I really enjoyed it, maybe I have to rewatch it, but I just found it to be so perplexing, and to the point where I couldn't even enjoy it. Like, I was sitting in the theater for, like, the final, like, 45 minutes or so, and I was just like, what is going on? I, I don't understand this at all. And I was just kind of confused throughout the, the finale of this movie, which really took me out of it. But overall, it's not terrible by any means. Uh, not Christopher Nolan's best, but it's still, it, it's, it's a solid movie. 
that song. Next we have It Follows. This is a fantastic horror movie. I remember before I went to go see it, I thought it would be stupid as hell, but this is not stupid. It has, like, one jump scare, if any. The It's a very great concept. It's like a sexually transmitted demon, as Ash from the Captain Vita show would say. And, honestly, it's full of... It's, it's a great homage to retro horror movies. It's full of interesting characters. And Michael Monroe does a fantastic job here. So, overall, it follows. If you haven't seen it, dude, really actually check this one out. Very underrated film. Alright, next we have Mad Max Fury Road. Now, I was surprised that this got nominated for Best Picture. But still, uh, do I think it deserves to get nominated? No, but this is still a very, very, very good action movie. Phenomenal direction from George Miller. Great cinematography from John Seal. Tom Hardy, fantastic performance. As well as Charlie, Char Charlize Theron. I, I don't know why I wasn't able to say her name properly, but phenomenal in the technical aspect. And there isn't much of a story, but still, it's a brilliant, brilliant thing to look at on Blu-ray. So, yeah. I need to make sure this is straight. All right. All right. And next up... We have Paper Towns. Now, I've seen Paper Towns twice, and it's not the best movie. It really isn't, but, I mean, it's much better than Fulton Our Stars, in my opinion. Much, much better. I felt so much more attached to these characters, and I like the fact that it wasn't necessarily a romance movie, more or less an adventure movie. I thought it was, I thought it was very ambitious to do that when you put John Green in, like, the promos for the film, but it was still fantastic movie just a lot of fun interesting characters so haven't seen paper towns i'd highly suggest it i know some people really hate this movie but i enjoyed it all right next we have south park bigger longer and uncut can't go wrong with south park trey parker and matt stone are hilarious i love the tv show south park the movie is like even better it's got so many funny jokes and one musical number that has me in tears every time i watch this movie it's so damn funny. It's about Kyle's mom. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It has been tears every time I watch it. It's per that musical number though. Fantastic. All right. Next we have the Duff. I've seen the Duff three times, and every single time I've absolutely loved this movie. I adore, adore, adore the Duff so much. Is it similar to Mean Girls? Yeah. Very much so. It's very similar to Mean Girls. However, in saying that, it's not a bad thing. It's not as good as Mean Girls, but it's it's for this generation, and I think it really does work here. Me and my friends, we were dying in the theater. We really enjoyed this movie, and honestly, I think um, yeah, it's not gonna age very well because it's like more. It's a modern movie, but so. I thought I think it's it's funny for what it is. I really enjoy it. So yeah. Uh, next we have the gift. Joel Edgerton's directorial debut is nearly perfect. Honestly, performances out of the park. Direction beautiful. Writing amazing. Tension. This is probably like the one word I would use to describe this movie is tension. 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 That's all that's in this movie. It's. 100% palpable, and it's phenomenal. And I've seen this uh, two times or three times. I think I've only seen it twice, but it's still excellent, excellent psychological thriller. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this one, but I know a lot of people have seen it, but I'm not going to talk about it because I haven't seen it. The Green Mile, Tom Hanks, her is supposed to be amazing, so yeah, I know I have to see it. Don't let me know in the comments, because I know I have to. Uh, next we have the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water. Um, words can't even describe how much fun I had in the theater watching this. So I found it on Blu-ray for like ten bucks, and I was like, "That is so worth it." So I bought it, and yeah, story of my freaking life. Next up, we have the Usual Suspects. Haven't seen this, know the twist, so pretty much ruined for me. But um, yeah. Still really want to see the movie. Look at this. Look at this. What is this? I bought this on Black Friday and they just have a chip corner. Uh, come on, Walmart. Up your game. 
the final movie that I have here is uh, probably the most underrated movie of last year. I mean, it might there might be some others that I find to be better, but nevertheless, The Walk is probably... It, it definitely is one of the most underrated movies of 2015. Visually, it's stunning. Excellent performances from JGL as well as... Um, Oh my god, what's the name? Ben Kingsley. I don't know how I forgot that. And all the other people that play supporting roles in here. Robert Zemeckis, fantastic direction. When he actually walks on the wire, dude, like, you won't even know how much, like, I was just like, oh my god, please do not die. I really don't want you to die, man. Please don't. It, it's just a great movie. Phenomenal movie, and it really pays a uh, great tribute to the old Trade Center Twin Towers. And, um, yeah, so that's the walk. And those are all the movies that I have for you. I don't know if I talked about one, I don't know where that one went because I brought it down. But, um, I, the, the other movie that I bought was Kingsman The Secret Service on Blu ray. I've seen that three times now, I just rewatched it today, and, um, it's, it's awesome. Church scene is the best scene of 2015, hands down. Um, action was so good, it's beautiful. Oh my god, the action's just sexy to look at. And it's really, really, really damn funny. And Colin Firth, I bought him as a badass. So, um, yeah, any movie that can do that, props. Alright, but those are all the Blu-rays I have for you guys today on my Blu-ray update. And, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, a comment, share it, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe, but if you have, do not hit subscribed. I don't know why people say that. I don't know why people don't say that, because you don't want someone to hit subscribed, because that means they would unsubscribe. Now I'm, now I'm looking too much into it, but as always, thank you all so much for watching, and until my next video, maybe not review, but video, I'm Mr. 401, and I will see you all later.